All right, this is lab number seven. We'll be working with network security groups and ASG. We're going to start by deploying a virtual network, create some application security groups, and create rules between these uh, network objects. All right, so we're going to have two groups of servers. Each one will be assigned to a different application uh, security tag, if you will. So the server will be assigned either as web server or management server. Okay. Rather than hard coding based on IP address, we will define the rules based on the role these machines plays. We're going to create rules so that any machine designated as a management server, RDP, should be allowed. While any web server uh, roles uh, should have the IS web page accessible. All right. And we're also going to deploy a network security group to uh, control the network access. Now we're going to start by creating a virtual network. So here's our VNet address, followed by, oops, a default subnet of slash 24. We'll create our first uh, application security group representing the web servers. The second application server group is uh, going to represent the management servers. So now we have the two type of uh, roles defined as an application uh, security group. We can now go ahead and create an NSG that, that creates a rule between these roles. So this creates the network security group. We want this network security group to be associated with the subnet we just created. So navigate to uh, the NSG that was recently created, head over to subnet and associate it. All right, so this will be associated to the default subnet. NSG contains rules that applies to traffic. For instance, you may have a subnet with a node inside of the subnet. Now imagine that you have another server that tries to access services across the subnet. Okay. Now in this example here, 
um, we would have NSG on the outbound machine. So, so all the outbound security rules decides whether the traffic will even leave the machine. So there can be an uh, NSG applied to the NIC. Now, during a traffic heading to the green machine, the outbound security rules of the NIC applies first, followed by the outbound rule associated with the subnet, followed by the inbound rule of the destination subnet, and inbound rule of the NIC of the destination machine. Now consider if I have another server in the subnet. Now communication between these two machines are subject uh, subject to the rules defined only at the NIC level. So communication between these two machines uh, will not leave the subnet. So now the subnet NSG rule will apply to it. All right, so keep that in mind. It depends on the path the traffic takes. The NSG bound at the NIC level or the subnet level controls whether the traffic goes through or not. When we define the rules, we can define a rule that based on source and destination. There are plenty of network tags they used to represent different type of traffic. So for instance, I can hard code an IP address. I can use a service tag that represents different types of Azure services. Okay, so perhaps I only want uh, the storage account services to access or SQL server from that region. So these are all service tag that translates to IP address. Earlier, we defined the application security group. So what that means is that we would like to control traffic based on the purpose of the server. So here, uh, for web server, I want to ensure that port 80 and 443 will come through, okay, because that's sort of the job of a web server. All right, TCP. And we're going to say this should allow all web traffic. Oops, I think I got this reversed. Source is any. It's, sorry, it's the destination being the application security group. Got that reversed. Didn't look right. All right, so there we go. Next, we're going to add one more inbound rules for the management server. Again, application security group. For the management server, we want to ensure RTP access is, is available. Allow. Now we have one NSG created, two application uh, security groups, along with rules that controls the traffic flow to these destinations. So next we're going to create a couple virtual machines.
right, so make sure this newly created VM will sit within the default subnet of the net VNet that we created earlier. All right, now we want to associate this machine to be part of the my NSG that we created earlier. We'll repeat this process to create the uh, second VM for the management. All right, when both machines are ready, we're going to start with the VM web. Let's go to the networking. Now we need to make sure that this machine is known as the web ASG. Yeah, it, within the application server group, this is assigned as a web server role. All right, so here navigate to networking, application security groups. And this will be associated uh, with the web. Now we're going to head over to the next machine. Alright, now let's uh, head back to the virtual machine. If everything works correctly, uh, the management server should have the RDP access open to it. Alright, so because it uh, looks like we are getting uh, into this VM, so we know the uh, application security group associated with this machine has allowed traffic from the internet to enter the RTP. Now I'm returning to the web. We're going to install the web server. All right, after a few minutes, the uh, web server role should be installed. Uh, we can now go to reviews. I see the IS web page comes up. All right, so to recap, uh, the reason uh, this machine is able to expose 40, uh, sorry, ADM443 is because the network security group associated has a rule so that these ports should be made uh, open to the web server. Right. So that concludes the lab number seven. Application uh, security group allows tags, uh, to, uh, allows uh, uh, rules to be created based on the purpose of these machines. All right. So as we create more and more machines with the same ASG destination, they will all have the same port available automatically.